there's also a really significant behavioral component to loss. And one of the things that I learned when my husband was killed was that just because I lost somebody didn't make me an expert on grief, and they talked about things, and I had no idea what grief was. I didn't have a clue. But there is very often a behavioral side to it, and people sometimes act out those things that are going on inside them, which is usually pretty chaotic. Okay? Now, very often when we act them out, we act them out in ways that are not th the most healthiest for us. And so a lot of those things end up being pretty self-destructive. Okay? But here's the key, is that nobody gets up in the morning and says, wow, I think I'm going to plan a couple self-destructive things to do today. Okay? But what does happen is you get up in the morning and you say, I really don't care. The next piece is the social side. And very often, you know, we as a population, we want to see people do well. So when we see them out and about, and we think, oh, they're doing real well, well. They're, they're out and about, and they're, they're engaging in things. Well, very often, if we have extremes in, in social behavior, either the person who was very quiet is always out, or the person who had been social is very reclusive and very isolative, you could probably wonder that maybe this is related to the new identity that they have and how are they dealing with this loss, and they just might be avoiding it. Might not. And then the last piece is something that's very often overlooked, and it's called the spiritual component. And this is where we take an honest look at the unanswerable whys. And very often we don't do this. The unanswerable whys are the ones that are going to force us to say, why did this happen? Why me? Why him? Why? And there's no easy answers to this, but it is in these unanswerable whys, next place, that we find this element of survivor guilt. And my encouragement is to explore those elements of survivor guilt, because so much of it is irrational, so much of it is perceived. And when we go and when we look at those, those elements of survivor guilt, okay, we can, it can motivate us and challenge us to ask those questions, and in it, we find peace of mind. Notice I didn't say closure. I think everybody, I know there's a, there's a whole segment here that will agree that closure does not exist. Okay. And I have a definition for closure, but first, I believe that closure is what the BRAC Commission does to military installations. That's closure. And let me give you all a very personal example of closure. How many people in this room have closure with the attacks on America on September 11th? So we can eliminate the word closure from our vocabularies, OK? But I believe Joanne's definition of closure is that what closure is is a degree or range of our ability to accept the reality of the event, live happily in the present, and look forward to the future. And I think we can have a high degree of closure, but I don't believe we ever have closure. Now, I had the opportunity to work with our Canadian allies, and I asked that question somewhat, somewhat timidly, and all of our Canadi Canadian allied forces agree they didn't have closure with the events of September 11th. But can we find peace? Yes, I believe we can. Can we make our peace with it? Yes, we can. And can we live happily in the present and look forward to the future? Yes, we can. Now, I, uh, I spend a lot of time teaching people what to say and what to do, so I, I would have to give you one piece of advice before I leave, besides eliminating closure from your vocabulary. When we come across families of the fallen, and, and anyone in general, but especially with families of the fallen, we, are really, we really want to do and say the right things. And very often, we just don't know what to say, and so we say nothing. Okay? Or we, we try to fix their, their grief, we try to fix it, or we try to give them hope. And although they're well-intentioned, they may not be the best things, because sometimes in either trying to give them hope or fixing their grief, we sometimes like, minimize their loss or discount it. And we don't, we're not supposed to do that. So here is tried and true what you can say to a family, either military or civilian. Good thing to say is, I'm sorry for your loss. We've just expressed our condolences. 
A better thing to say is, I'm sorry for the loss of your son, daughter, husband, wife, father. Because now we've expressed our condolences and we've identified what that loss is. Best thing to say is, I'm sorry for the loss of your son, Josh. I'm sorry for the loss of your wife, Sarah. Because we've expressed our condolences, we've personalized the relationship, and we've personalized those that were lost. And if you notice, I didn't say, I'm sorry for the loss of your son, Private Jones. Because to that family, they lost Josh first and Private Jones second. And I think most survivors will agree, that's all we really have to say. You know, and there's sometimes that awkwardness uh, afterwards, and if there is that awkwardness, then I offer you to thank those survivors for their loved one's sacrifice. And then, if you really feel the need to say more, because we feel that we really have to tell people just how, how much we feel sorry, so if you feel the need to say anything else, I see survivors shaking their head over there. Yeah. If you really feel the need to say anything else, then what you can say is you can thank those survivors because those survivors are going to live that sacrifice, that ultimate sacrifice, every day in big and small ways that never make the evening news. Now, I, uh, I'm a former military instructor, so I could get up and talk for four hours on any subject. However, we've come to the end of our overview. So here are some helpful links. Here's the three that, that we've been made um, wonderfully aware of today, and that's Army SOS. Okay, we, we've seen that in action today. Um, Grief Solutions, which is, is my company where I help people, teach them how to respond. And the last is TAPS, okay, which welcomes with open arms every survivor and gives them a safe place. And it gives them the ability to connect with other survivors so that they don't feel alone or isolated. Okay. Lastly, Lastly, got it. Lastly, on behalf of Jill and Taps and myself at Grief Solution, we want to thank everyone in this room for your service and sacrifice to America. And I see some of we have our allies, and thank you for the service and sacrifice to your country as well. I hope that you all have gained some, some good information from, from today's um, forum. And again, I ask all of you to help us um, develop another forum for next year that, that will give you the types of information that, that you need and that you're seeking. Thank you again for everything you've done. Thank you to everyone that's helped us make this event happen. Um, we appreciate your, your coming and we definitely appreciate your service and your sacrifice. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you.